Hello, this is Eric. Today is the 24th of February 2024. And in this video, we will start talking about the church. Uh, we'll, we'll, cover, uh, we'll basically cover the two aspects of the church, the mystical and the local ones. Um, some people suppose that, you know, this is a very simple topic, but actually it is not. And you might al already have heard about the, the so-called de-churched people or unchurched people. These are people that uh, believe that they have no need you know, to attend or to be part of a local church or to be somehow uh, linked to um, a local denomination. They think that they, uh, by themselves, are the church. So this study uh, is really relevant in the sense of... Um, explaining uh, this phenomenon and pointing us to the right direction regarding the understanding of what the church is and what and of what God expects from us as Christians okay so this uh, this word church in English uh, it derives from the original term ecclesia in Greek, right? And this term ecclesia has nothing to do with the gospel. Jesus used this word uh, to refer to what we know today as the church because it was a very common and simple uh, term for the people of his time during his local uh, during during his local ministry on earth, right? So this is the ecclesia. You know, this concept uh, was created by the Greek, and around Greece, it worked in different ways. I mean, there were different requirements for a person to become a citizen, right, in each Greek polis. Uh, but in general, uh, pretty much uh, being a citizen and thus being allowed to participate in an ecclesia uh, would depend on having uh, possessions, land, and being uh, a son, in, in many occasions you had to be a son of originally Greek uh, parents, right? And there were many other requirements. But provided that you were recognized as a citizen in your local polis, you would be allowed to uh, participate in the polis uh, policies, right? So you would be able and you would be allowed to establish laws, to discuss the laws, and to discuss on everything related to the political scenario of these polis, right? Uh, so it was this concept that Jesus took uh, by Loan to establish what we know now as Jesus Church, Jesus Ecclesia, right? So the, 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 the root of the Greek word is formed by ek or ex, out of, and kaleo, right? To call with a loud voice, to be called, right? So... Um, this is the Greek expression, right, uh, that was used to refer to any kind of assembly, specifically this one that I mentioned, that I showed you in the picture. Now, Jesus used this term to refer in a particular way 
to all those who have been called out of the world to belong to him. What do you mean by world, Eric? Uh, by world, I am not mentioning uh, the physical world, right? Jesus never called anyone uh, to, to be apart from society, apart from all the other men, isolated, right? No. Um, we are called by Jesus to be salt and light in the world. So it is necessary for us to, to be active among men, right? But we are called out of this spiritual conscience, this spiritual collective conscience that goes against God, right? This is what we are called to uh, by by God. And I think I forgot to to open the Bible here, but yes, we're gonna check out you know some portions of the scripture here. So let's check out Matthew 16, 18. Matthew 16, 18. And it says, And I also say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overpower it. Right? Um, yeah, it's no secret for many, you know, that, uh, you know, the Catholic Church uses this verse here to, to base their concept of, you know, their Pope concept, stating that uh, Peter would be, uh, you know, the first Pope, right? And that on Peter, uh, the Church of Christ would be built, but if you analyze here, uh, you know, this little word here, this is small and brief word, this, you are going to understand that this is not related to Peter. No. Um, in, the, in the English text, I don't think it's clear, right? In Portuguese, for example, it's very clear because we have more than, uh, you know, a demonstrative uh, pronoun, you know, to, to use here. So it's clearer. But if you resort to the original text, you are going to see that Jesus is actually stating here that the church would be built upon him, right? Peter would never be able to secure the fact that the church would not be overpowered by the gates of Hades, right? Uh, but anyway, this is not really uh, what I what I had to say here. You know, this is not our main topic here. Yeah, we can surely discuss this in the future, but it's just very important to state, guys, that you know, Jesus is God. Jesus is uh, the Almighty God, you know? The reason why we are destined, you know, to, uh, to be successful as Christians is not because of our strength, our capacity. No, it is because of Jesus, right? He is the Alpha. He is the Omega, right? He is is the path, the truth, not Peter, not you, not me, nor anybody else, right? But anyway, let's go back to our topic here. So, uh, again, we're going to read Romans 1, verses 5 to 6, and see what the Apostle Paul has to say in this sense as well. Romans 1, 5, and 6. And it says, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles in behalf of his name, among whom you also are the called of Jesus Christ. So Paul is mentioning here those men that had been called 
out of the Gentiles in behalf of the name of Jesus, right? Uh, to, to exert obedience of faith to Jesus, right? So here we have the calling concept again, right? And uh, we have this mystical aspect of the church, right? Um, so what do you mean, Eric, by mystical? It sounds like uh, oc occultism. No. Uh, mystical here is a spiritual, and it's not uh, stuck in time. It's not limited to time. What I'm trying to tell you is that the church of Christ, the ecclesia of Christ, encompasses all men and women call it out of the world along the history of mankind in this dispensation of the church, right? So all these men, they will, they will belong to denominations, to assorted, to several denominations, to several local churches, but they will comprise a living organism, right, in Christ, and they will be gathered because they have been called by God to be part of his supreme purpose, regardless of the time and space in which they are, right? Uh, so let's check out Ephesians 1, verses 22 and 23. Ephesians 1, verses 22 and 23. And he put all things in subjection under his feet and made in head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all, all in all. All in all encompasses the entire humanity in all its periods in time, right? Well, um, now it is very interesting that the same Apostle Paul is going to mention uh, the metaphor of the body, right? So we we are now going to be uh, covering here, we are going to be addressing the concepts, you know, the names which refer to the Ecclesia, right? Uh, along the New Testament. So we have body of Christ, the bride of Christ, right? And we have the new man. They are all concepts related to the Ecclesia. To, to Jesus Ecclesia, right? So the body of Christ is a very interesting concept. You know, as I told you in the beginning of this video, there are people nowadays that call themselves the church. They don't think they need anyone else. They think that, you know, it's really nonsense to be part of a local congregation. They think that they themselves are the church isolated, right? And, you know, I, I don't need to spend too much time trying to tell you how far from the truth this is. Because um, we have the entire book of Acts, for example, telling us about the importance of congregating. We have that passage in Hebrews, I don't recall now the chapter and verse, but you can check it out in your Bible if you want, saying that we must not stop congregating, right? Um, now, personally, you know, because of the difficulty to find a congregation, a ministry which I could identify with, I spent... Uh, a long time, you know, just congregating, but uh, virtually. But occasionally I would, you know, travel to the city and meet, you know, the, the church there. But I found out that even though I understood that was enough, it was not enough. So what I'm going to do starting tomorrow is I will join a local church. And if I wouldn't do that, I would have to start a local church. I would need to invite people, you know, to be with me. Because this is the way that 
God acts, that God operates in us. When, uh, why the body of Christ? Because just like your body, you have each member of your body with a special role. And all the members of your body, they are harmoniously interacting and cooperating one with the other. Imagine if your finger decided to be to somehow be plucked out of your hand or of your foot and told you that you know it is uh it is okay for for your finger to be uh actually your finger can only be plucked out of your hand right <laughs> if it was plucked out from your foot it would be a toe right so i'm sorry about that but anyway imagine that one day your your finger just gets out of your hand and stare it at you and told you, look, I don't need you anymore. I can be uh, full by myself. <laughs> it's ridiculous, right? Obviously, it cannot happen. But if it could happen, it would be ridiculous because this finger needs the rest of the body, right? It only has a role and it, it only lives with the rest of the body, right? So it is at church that you and me live in Christ. There is no Christianity without fellowship. And there is no love being enhanced. And there, there are no virtues, no godly uh, blessings being poured out on us out of the church environment. So it is a church that you are going to have to exercise patience. It is a church that you will have to exercise compassion. You see... This is fellowship. Fellowship is not only about you raising your hand, lifting up your hand, and praising the Lord, la, 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 la. And just entering, you know, a local church and talking to no one and getting out, and that's it. You, uh, you did what you had to do, you know. No, that is not fellowship. Fellowship is involvement fellowship means getting engaged in getting involved with the others and yes the others just like you they have flaws they have strengths as well and each one has a specific gift or a specific number of gifts that they can share with you and they will bless you just like you're going to be blessing them so this you know, how can I tell you that these are the these are the, the these are the dynamics of Jesus Ecclesia. You have your role and you cooperate among the brethren as the body of Christ. I'm not gonna be reading all these verses, okay? You can check out them if you want later. Um you have fellowship with the brethren. And you cooperate with the Lord. Yes, you're going to help the others there. You're going to join forces with the others there. Living alone is not good. We were not made to walk alone. Simple as that. Learn that you are limited. Learn that you are not enough by yourself. It is very important that we understand that. We are also the bride of Christ. And this is a, this is a metaphor that designates the complement of Christ. Can you grasp the deepness of this concept? Jesus is the head. Let's read here Ephesians 5, 31 and 32 and see what the Apostle Paul has to say about that. Ephesians, oops, it was already here. 32 and 30, no, 31, yeah, 31 and 32. Let's read it. 
For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Apparently, it has nothing to do with the church. Paul is simply talking about the marriage here, right? But take a look at verse 32. This mystery is great. Why a mystery, Paul? <laughs> it's so simple. It's just a man getting married with his wife, right? What is so mysterious about this? But let's keep on reading. But I am speaking with reference to Christ and the church. So we have songs of Solomon or the song of Solomon and many other references in the New Testament speaking about the fact that the marriage, I mean, a husband and a wife Although they are a couple, they spiritually point to the spiritual reality of Christ and the church. Paul is going to say that, uh, Paul is going to emphasize, you know, the, the, the relationship of dependence between um, husband and wife, right? And this, uh, you know, pretty much points to the fact that Jesus is the head. So the head means like the mind, right? The, the power, the intelligence, and the church is his body that complements him. Because if you don't have a body, you move nowhere, right? Uh, so although Christ is God, in economic terms... Christ really, really is attached, bound, linked to his body that is a church. So in economic terms, God, although God is and does not depend on anyone, God decided in economic terms to make use of his body that is a church, right? So, and by having a body, we're going to see Christ being expanded all over the earth. So in eternity, uh, we you, you can read uh, chapter 21 of the book of Revelation, and you will see that in eternity, all the nations of people saved will be enlightened by the light of the church. So the church will be the expansion of Christ on earth that will encompass every man and, and woman, right? Uh, so this body of Christ, this bride of Christ will be the helper of Christ and the pleasure and the light of Christ. So we read about this in Revelation 21, verse 2. Let's check it out, you know, just to see what it says here. Revelation, let me see if I can find it here. Okay, 21 verse 2, and it says, And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. So, Jesus is the husband, and he expects, like a, a bridegroom, you know, to have the bride with him. How beautiful that is. And you might be wondering, yeah, but I didn't read about, about a bride. Uh, well, <laughs> it's pretty clear here, right? Prepare it as a bride. Yeah, Eric, but it's still, I just read about a holy city. Yes, but if you check out here, later on, because, you know, this is a dialogue uh, th 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 actually, let me correct what I was about to say. This is a vision that, that John is having, right? But later on, after all this description, uh, you know, uh, and not only, sorry, not, not after the description, because the description of the New Jerusalem will start uh, as of verse 10 onward. Right, But from verse 1 to verse 8, 
we have here this brief description of the holy city that is compared to a bride, right? And we learn uh, that, you know, this bride is coming down out of heaven from God. So many Christians see here like a literal city with streets of gold, right? Uh, coming down out of heaven and establishing itself or being established here on earth. But if you continue reading uh, the following verses, you will find verse 9. And it says, Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowels, full of the seven last plagues, came and spoke with me, saying, Come here, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. So it is clear here that the holy city is not a literal city, but the bride of the Lamb of God, right? Um, the bride, the wife of the Lamb, which is the church, which is pretty obvious if you read, you know, all the other books of the New Testament, right? So this is the bride of the church, of the, sorry, the, <laughs> let, let me correct what I have just said. This is the bride of the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, right? And finally, we have the concept of the new man, a reality manifested through the church, which expresses the nature of Christ and his rich attributes right we can read here ephesians 4 24 let's check it out ephesians 4 oh, where is it oh sorry 4 verse 24 and it says and to put on the new self which in the likeness of god has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth Let's read um, let's read from verse 20 to 24, okay? But you did not learn Christ in this way, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught in him, just as truth is in Jesus, that in reference to your former way of life, you are to rid yourselves of the old self, which has been corrupted in accordance with the lusts of the seed, and that you are to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self, which is in the likeness of God. Sorry, <laughs> let me read 23 and 24 again. And that you are to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self, which in the likeness of God, has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. So this new self is this new, is this new self is the new conscience in us, which is Jesus Christ conscience. So this new self is Jesus conscience that will be installed in us. Praise the Lord for that. Uh, so the local churches, guy, in the book of Revelation, you're going to see uh, the, you're, you're going to see and read about the letters uh, symbolically written to you know to the churches at the time in Asia, right? Ephesus uh, and so on, Smyrna and so on. So these local churches, you know, there in the book of Revelation, they point to uh, historical uh, times of the church during this dispensation of the church, okay? But somehow, you know, they point to the fact that there are local churches. So the local churches, they are a historical New Testament pragmatic fact manifested throughout the world where the gospel of Jesus Christ has reached it. So... We're going to read, guys, about, you know, the churches in the New Testament, right? I don't have to read all these passages here. You can pause the video if you want and check one by one. But, you know, the fact is that local churches, um, 
you know, they arose accidentally. It is a sad fact that here in Brazil, and maybe in the country where you live, you have churches that unfortunately preach a gospel that has nothing to do with the apostles' gospel. Um, but, you know, when you see something like this, what you can do is basically pray and ask God that he gives, that he gives you wisdom so that you know how to cooperate with this church, how to... Uh, you know, to provide, you know, this local church or local churches with a wake-up call so that they wake up, you know, from the spiritual sleep and comply, start complying with the true gospel, right? But the local churches, you know, they are necessary. It is through these local churches that we have a expression, an expression, sorry, you know, it is through these local churches that we have an expression and a practical expression of this mystical and universal church through which, as I told you in the beginning of the video, we can learn and help uh, be blessed and cooperate with the others, thus growing up spiritually with all the other members of the body of Christ. So these local churches are necessary, right? Uh, it is in the local churches that we develop our spiritual gifts properly, right? And, and, it, it, and also in these local churches, we can exercise mutual care. How are you going to help people if you're not in contact with them, if you don't know about the reality of their lives, of the tribulations they're undergoing. So don't tell me that you can just stay at home praying, you know, about people that you never see, that you don't know uh, in what kind of tribulation they're experiencing. It's impossible, right? So it is only a church that we exercise love, forgiveness, and that we are mutually edified and have our spiritual gifts developed, right? So basically, this is what I had to tell you in a very summarized manner. I hope you have enjoyed this video. And in our next video, we will continue talking about the church. Thank you so much, and God bless your life.